A classic application of the theory of com perfectly competitive market equilibrium is to tax incidence, which answers the question, if a tax is imposed on a commodity, who actually really pays for the tax, the consumer or the firm? To start with, just pay attention to the middle diagram. This is an uh, illustration of a standard kind of, uh, a common kind of tax where the consumer pays the tax. So suppose in an initial situation, in order to get the consumers to demand, let's say, 20 units of the commodity, the price needs to be, say, uh, $5. Now suppose that the government imposes a tax on this commodity. So it tells the consumers, every time you buy one of these units of the good, you're going to have to pay a dollar. Now, the, in order to get the consumers to demand 20, the firms would have to reduce would have to reduce the um, the price to four. So if it's a tax of one, and if before with no tax, if the price were five dollars, they were willing to buy twenty. Now the the firm can only charge four dollars if the firm wants to get twenty units sold, because the consumer is going to have to pay four dollars to the firm and one dollar to the government. Therefore, the correct way of illustrating this is what's shown in the middle diagram, namely that the demand curve falls by the amount of the tax. So the original demand curve is here, the new demand curve is here, and the difference between them, the vertical gap here and here, is the amount of the tax. So that's the way to illustrate a situation where tax is imposed on consumers. That is, consumers pay the tax. Consumers send the checks to the government. Now, the merchant might collect it for the consumers, but it's the consumers who have to pay. You illustrate it by a downward shift in the demand curve by the amount of the tax. So I haven't convinced you that that's the right way to shift the demand curve. I have now erased my marks. Let's continue working in this middle diagram to see what happens. So the demand curve shifts down by the amount of the tax. The original equilibrium point, the original market equilibrium is here, the new market equilibrium is here. Clearly, the market equilibrium price has fallen. Now think about that. The government imposes a tax on consumers. The result is that the market equilibrium price falls. That's good news for consumers. The, the tax imposition is bad news for consumers, but the fact that the market equilibrium price falls is good news for consumers. In fact, to the extent that the market equilibrium price falls from its original point to its new point, the consumers are happy. They don't, they don't pay that. If Let's say if the, if the tax were a dollar a unit, but the equilibrium price fell by 20 cents, then the consumers would actually only be paying an extra 80 cents. Who else, who pays the other 20 cents? Well, it goes to the firm. The firm ends up having that burden because the equilibrium price has fallen. So let's look at that more precisely. Start here at the new equilibrium price. Draw a vertical line, vertical line up. The length of that vertical line, it's not very, very it's supposed to be directly, completely vertical. The, the length of that vertical line is the amount of the tax. That's just this line here. So it's the gap between the demand, the new demand curve and the old demand curve, so it's the amount of the tax. We can divide that vertical line into two parts. This lower part and this upper part. Okay. The lower part, the part that's labeled F, corresponds to the extent to which the equilibrium price has fallen. Consumers don't pay that because 
it's the firms that end up paying that. So that's why that part is marked with an F, because the firms actually bear the burden of that, because the, the price has fallen. The consumers bear the burden of the rest of the tax, which is the, the upper part, the C part of the vertical red line. So in this way, one can divide the entire amount of the tax into two different parts, the upper part that's borne by consumers and the lower part, part that's borne by the firm. These diagrams, away, uh, by the way, come from the last page of the packet of class handouts. So that finishes at least an introduction to what happens when it's the consumers who send the checks to the government. Now I want to turn to the left-hand diagram which is what happens when the firms do the same thing. In other words, the firms have to send the checks to the government. Let's suppose that before the tax was imposed on the firms, if you wanted to get the firms to supply, let's say, 60 units of the commodity, they were you have to pay them at least this price. But after the tax is imposed, let's say the tax is $2 a unit, then they're going to demand two dollars more. If if before they were willing to accept sixty dollars a unit or let's say six hundred dollars a unit to produce sixty units, then now they're going to require six hundred and two dollars a unit to produce six, sixty units because two dollars is going to go to the government. If the customers pay them six hundred and two, they're only going to get six hundred. And therefore the right way to diagram the imposition of a tax on the firms is to vertically shift the supply curve up by the amount of the tax, which is what I show here. So to repeat, the correct way to demonstrate how a tax on the firms affect the demand supply curves is you vertically shift the supply curve up by the amount of the tax. Okay, so now I'm going to erase some of these marks and we'll continue our analysis on the left-hand side. The original equilibrium point on the left-hand side is this. The new one, after you've shifted the supply curve up by the amount of the tax, is this. So on the one hand, the firm is sad because it has a tax imposed on it. But on the other hand, the firm is happy because the new equilibrium price, call it P2, is higher than the original equilibrium price, call it P1. And so to the extent that equilibrium price rises, namely it gets more money from its customers, the firm isn't sad about the tax. So to determine to what extent the firm is sad about the tax, start with the new equilibrium point and draw a line down from it to the original supply curve. You can divide that line into two parts. One part is bigger than the than P1, the original equilibrium price, and the other part is below P1. And now you can see why I've labeled them C and F, because to the extent that the equilibrium price goes up, firms don't pay for that. And there isn't anybody else except consumers other than firms in this model, in this story, so consumers have to be the ones to pay for it. Therefore, the, the part above the original equilibrium price, the part above P1, I've labeled C. The rest of the entire length here is the same as the entire length here. So it's, a, it's the total amount of the tax. And of that, f firms only have to bear the part that consumers don't bear. So firms end up paying this, sorry, this bottom part right here, firms end up paying that bottom part because that's the part that consumers don't pay. Uh, consumers pay because the price has gone up. So now let's compare the left-hand diagram and the middle diagram. And what you can see through these lines that I've drawn this one, this one, this one, 
I'll erase them right now, but um, but now you can see which ones I'm talking about. The length of the lines marked C in the left-hand and middle diagram are the same, and the length of the lines marked F in the left-hand diagram and the middle diagram are the same. In other words, regardless of who sends the checks to the government, whether it's the firms is in the left-hand diagram or the consumers is in the middle diagram, the ultimate tax incidence is exactly the same. And therefore, we can draw another diagram, which is the right-hand diagram, which shows the ultimate tax incidence without specifying who actually sends the checks to the government, who, who actually the tax is imposed upon. So the right-hand diagram is called unspecified. And it only has a de a re the original demand curve and the original supply curve. Because if you don't know who's paying the tax, you don't know which curve to shift. Nevertheless, as you can see, it is possible to correctly identify the ultimate incidence of the tax. The consumers have to pay this part, and the firms have to pay that part. In other words, the way to figure out the ultimate incidence using the right-hand diagram is to start at the original equilibrium point and then go to the left until the gap between the demand and supply curve is equal to the amount of the tax. So the whole thing has to be the amount of the tax. I can draw that another way. This whole thing is the amount of the tax. When you've, once you've gone the correct amount to the left of the original equilibrium, then you draw a line that's on the original equilibrium price, and that divides the amount of the tax into two parts. The part that's above, the consumers have to pay, and the part that's below, the firms have to pay. It's easiest to answer using the right-hand diagram the following question. How does the amount of tax that consumers versus firms have to pay change when one of these curves becomes steeper or flatter? So for example, in the right-hand diagram, maybe you could, maybe you can see that if the demand curve were a lot flatter, like so, then for the same amount of the tax, you have to go farther to the left, for example, like this. And so that means consumers would only pay a little bit and firms would pay a lot. In other words, when the demand curve is really flat, that means when consumers are really sensitive to price, you increase price a little bit on them and, boy, they decrease quantity. So when the demand curve is really flat, then firms end up having to pay more of the burden of a tax. And you can also play with this by shifting the demand curve. Let me pause to erase what I did. I mean, you can also uh, shift the supply curve. So suppose the supply curve was really, really flat. Well, then, let's, if you draw a line down from the, the supply curve to the demand curve, that's the amount of the tax, you can see that here's F and here's C. So this is a situation where, uh, let me pause to fix that line. Where the C portion is here and the F portion is here. So in this situation where the supply curve is, is very flat, consumers end up paying by far the largest proportion of the tax because the suppliers are very sensitive to changes in price. You decrease price their price a little bit and they drastically decrease quantity. So in that situation, it's consumers that bear most of the burden. So in this kind of way, you can talk about what happens if you have a steep or flat demand curve, what happens if you have a steep or flat supply curve, and how that affects the proportion of the tax that's shared by consumers versus firms. You can also do that in the middle and left-hand diagram, but it's easier to do it in the right-hand diagram.
in the next video we're going to talk about subsidies which are negative taxes and therefore can be analyzed in very much the same way.